from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You're now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. Tony is a personal development author, presenter, and one of the country's foremost experts on NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. He's best known for his top-rated podcast, Zestology, which focuses on living life with energy, vitality, and motivation, as well as his three-book series published by Virgin Books, which was later translated into 12 languages. In addition to his work as a host and author, Tony is a popular presenter on Sky Sports since joining the team in 2006 hosting countless sporting events from football and golf to hockey, squash, and more. Tony, thanks for being here today. Hi, Zeph. Thanks for having me on. So, you know, I want to get into a little bit of your background just to share a little bit more of who you are with everyone tuning in. If you wouldn't mind uh, maybe just a little bit leading up to Zestology and uh, what brought you into Sky Sports and things like that, just to give everyone a little more on where you are now. Yeah, well, I've kind of been a presenter for about 20 years. I was a radio presenter for 10 years in this country and then um, kind of got the gig at Sky, which was my dream job because I always loved sport and I really wanted to work there. And at the same time, I was always interested in personal development. I trained in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And using the skills of NLP, I ended up writing three books, got a three book deal and wrote three books, which have been published in 12 languages. But there's a bit more of a story behind why I started to do the podcast because a couple of years ago, I went on holiday to the deepest, darkest jungle in the Philippines. And um, I mean, it was an absolutely beautiful place. It was a retreat called The Farm. And you wake up in the morning in The Farm, you've got nothing more to worry about than the sounds of the birds chirruping outside your log cabin. And whether to maybe do a little bit of yoga or Pilates or just, you know, lie on the edge of the pool and soak up the sun. Uh, but unfortunately for me, it didn't really quite work out as idyllic as I'd hoped and quite so much of a dream as I'd hoped because I ended up getting really ill in this on this jungle setting. And I woke up one morning and I had uh, numb patches on my face. I had a rash. Every bone in my body started to ache. It turned out I'd contracted this virus. Um, so I kind of came straight back home to the UK, went and saw loads of doctors and neurologists, and they said, well... The good news is we know you've had a virus. Um, The bad news is we don't know what virus it is. And it turns out there's loads of viruses out there in the world. And they just, you know, Dr. Modern Medicine hasn't discovered what viruses viruses they are yet. You know, they can tell that your blood count is elevated, your red blood count or whatever it is. But they can't tell you exactly what it is, nor how to get better. So I ended up having to take three months off the dream job, the the job at Sky Sports and writing all the books and everything else. And three months pretty much in bed doing nothing and feeling very miserable for myself. So um, that was where the podcast idea was born because I thought if I ever get through this and I do get back to full fitness and I really didn't know if I would for a while. I thought if I ever get back, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do it all about energy and vitality and zest for life because I don't have any of that at the moment. And I really, <laughs> really want it back again. So it kind of really made me appreciate it when I got back to full fitness. Absolutely. I mean, I can't imagine being out of commission for that long a period of mm. time. And, you know, you're probably so alone with yourself with your thoughts for, for quite a long time, too. And you yeah. know, how do you uh, sit there knowing that whatever you think up right now, you can't even act on for another month or two? That's got to be pretty rough. Was there ever a time where uh, you said, I don't know if I'm going to get better through all that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And do you know, it really made me appreciate people who live with chronic illnesses such as chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, ME. A lot of them have quite similar symptoms. And it really made me realize what what a difficult existence it must be when you can't get to the bottom of your health symptoms. And for me, yeah, I mean, definitely because Sky would keep ringing up. And they were great about it. They said, take as long as you need. And they'd kind of ring me about once a week just to check in and see how I was. And, and they'd say, how are you feeling? I'd be like, pretty much the same you know I didn't, I didn't have anything to tell them so and eventually I went back you know very very slowly it actually took me about a year to kind of get back to full fitness but what's been interesting is you know kind of going on this personal journey of recording the podcast and speaking to some really cool interesting experts in the field of you know health vitality medicine meditation sport um 
finding out that um, there are so many things one can do, but also applying it to my own life as well. So I'm kind of selfish. You know, it's a good podcast for me <laughs> uh, to ask these questions as well as to share this knowledge with other people who might be going through something similar or who just want a little bit more spring in, in your step because, you know, I always think that energy is kind of, it's the foundation of motivation and achievement, isn't it? If you wake up in the morning and you feel great, you can just do anything. And on those days when you feel a little bit sluggish or you haven't had enough sleep or you've been woken up for whatever reason, those are the days when you find it really hard to get anything done. So energy really filters and percolates through into every area of your life, I think. Yeah, you know, I've certainly paid a lot more attention to where my energy levels are, especially going through the winters where I am. It gets quite cold. I don't spend as much time outside. And, you know, I found mm-hmm. that I have to start supplementing with vitamin D just to make sure, because, oh, yeah. you know, I don't get it from the sunlight uh, that I'm missing out on. So uh, where are you, Zeph? I'm in Baltimore, Maryland, so I'm on the east coast of the oh, U.S. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, been to, um, I've been to Baltimore, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, it's, it's not freezing, freezing like some other locations, but, I mean, I certainly don't spend nearly as much time outside in the wintertime as I do in the summer. So I, I definitely want to jump into kind of building that energy, building that motivation up in just a second. But something you hit on just from the start was NLP, and I know that so many people listening and have never even heard of NLP. I actually hadn't even heard of it mm. until about a year or two ago. Uh, do you mind sharing just a little bit more about, you know, what is NLP, uh, how does it work, and maybe how uh, some people could take advantage of it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So you you have heard of NLP. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a very good name, <laughs> uh, but it's really popular. It's used by a lot of people around the world. It stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And it's essentially a study of how we do things well. It's, uh, you can use it to kind of manage your mood and your communication, communicate better with other people and yourself. It's really good for goal setting and it's used a lot in therapy as well. Um, and I started using it because, as I told you before, I worked in TV, I was a radio presenter. And I was really interested in the linguistic element of it because quite a lot of it is the language that we use on, on ourselves and other people. You said something really interesting earlier on. You said, you know, when I had three months at home on my own feeling sorry for myself I must have had a lot of time to kind of think (laughs) a lot of time alone with my own thoughts I think was the phrase you used yeah and um that we we all do that a lot I think and when we do our self-talk can be quite negative can't it you know we we kind of say things to ourselves that aren't very kind that we'd never say them to other people oh you're not very good at this or you'll never do that you'd never dream of saying that to someone else but our self-talk can be quite critical. So I was interested in the linguistics of it. And as it turned out, um, learning the neuro-linguistic programming skills ended up really helping me on my radio show as well. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So is it that it's getting you better answers when you're talking to people? I mean, I think one of the the big issues with NLP, especially when I first came around and and heard about it, was that Hmm. you don't, it doesn't say what it does. Like, it's a very scientific term. It's a very complicated term. Um, You know, is this something that we're using in our everyday uh, conversations with people? Or is this more of like, is this meant to be more of a persuasive uh, sales type thing? How, Mm -hmm. where would it be? Oh, don't start using those words persuasive (laughs) and sales. It makes it sound really like cheesy and corny and and it's uh, you know in the wrong hands any communication skills would be but um i mean i'll give you a little example of how i used it because you can make your language more descriptive Mm. but um you can also make it kind of more persuasive if you want because when you're telling someone a story if you've got a better way of telling that story you would right so you know when i was telling you about when i was in the jungle for example um Uh, I used all the different senses when I was telling you about that experience because we experience the world in three main senses, the visual sense, the auditory sense, and the kind of kinesthetic, touchy-feely sense. And some people favor one sense and some people favor another. But the more that you can use rich sensory language, the more that you can tell a story effectively. So as I told you when I was in the jungle, I didn't just say I was in the jungle and it was very pretty or it was beautiful (laughs) or it was awesome, which, by the way, isn't a very district descriptive word i use the word awesome far too much but we need other words because actually what i told you was you know i was in the jungle and i had nothing more to worry about than the sound of the birds chirruping outside my log cabin in the morning so like you know talking about the auditory sense yeah. and then or whether to you know decide to do yoga or pilates or sit by the pool and soak up the sun so the that's the kind of kinesthetic sense 
Gotcha. Um, so, you know, trying to use the difference, is, it's also easy to focus on the visual. Most of us tend to be a little bit more visual when we describe stuff. And I, I started doing this on my radio show. It was really interesting because I thought, well, you know, I've got a perfect opportunity to do this because I could focus on my language, improve my language a little bit more and maybe get more listeners, get them listening for longer and get them feel better about listening, get them to have a kind of a happier day or a more entertained day when they listen to my radio show. It turned out my, my listening figures went up a lot hmm. while, I was, while I was using this stuff. And the boss called me into his office one day and he said, I don't know what you've been doing, but your listening figures have gone through the roof. And it was on a day when I'd used a lot of these skills and I thought, oh, no, I've really got rumbled, you know. But I ended up having more listeners than The Breakfast Show and I was on The Drive Time Show. And that, that doesn't normally happen in radio. So, um, so to me, that was the first indication that, OK, there's something more to look at with this NLP stuff. And then that's provided the basis for my personal development career. Although, as I said, now, you know, I look more at energy and I always try not to say, oh, you should definitely do this. You've got to do that. But just to offer some suggestions, and people might want to try um, changing their language, making it more descriptive, using the visual and the auditory and the touchy-feely, or they might not, but that's fine. Just offer a few suggestions up and see where they go with it. Right. So it sounds like you become a much better storyteller, and it, it really gets people interested in what you're saying uh, much quicker mm. because it, it's. I can definitely paint the picture in my head, and I'm a very photographic learner. I have a photographic memory. So if I saw that you left your phone on the kitchen table before we left the house, and it's mm. three hours later, I can still oh, really? tell you. Like, yeah. I can go back in my mind. I can picture it, and I can say, "Oh yeah, you left it on you know the left corner of the table before we left the house." <laughs> That's cool. That's, I mean, that's, um, I find that with, because visual is my strongest sense as well. And I find that with spelling. If I've seen a word once, I can remember how it's spelt. But if I've heard a song a million times, I still can't remember the lyrics. And it's so <laughs> annoying. So I just sing along and go, you know, la di da, while everyone else knows the actual lyrics. <laughs> Um, but one of the things I was going to ask you, Zef, is, you know, we, we do actually have five senses. We've got the, the visual, the auditory, the things we see, the things we hear, the things we feel. But also we've got the things we taste and smell. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering whether your sense of taste would be very well developed because you used to be a pastry chef, right? Yeah. So I worked in a gourmet bakery uh, as a young one, actually. This was like back in my high school time. Mm. And uh, I've I've held quite a few interesting jobs. I went from... I think like the summer before that, I drove a, a stick shift tractor around a summer camp doing maintenance work. And that was how I learned how to drive a stick shift. Um, right. Cool. And then all yeah. of a sudden just, you know, got into food. And I would say I definitely have a very well developed sense of taste. I love to cook. It's a big part of um, mm. who I am and what I do with my week. And so um, I think that it, it's safe to say that it's pretty well developed. Mm. And do you have? And what about smell? I thought, I think my taste, of, my sense of smell is very well developed. Like you know, if if someone has eaten garlic the night before, <laughs> I can, I feel like I can, and and I feel you know that certain smell I have to get away from it. You know, it's too much. <laughs> you know, I don't know if my smell is as good. I definitely haven't pulled that off. But then again, it's springtime. It's allergy season. Get a little bit more stuff mm. here. So maybe mm. the nose isn't working so well. But yeah. um, I've definitely been one to pick up on a certain scents before other people. Like, you know, if there's like a, a dead rodent in the middle of the road and we're driving and you know how the scent comes through your car. I can yeah. usually pick up on that a little bit quicker before people are like, I don't smell anything. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's just such an interesting area. And of course, you know, one of the things about modern day life is that um, with all the distractions and the technology that we've got around us, it's almost designed to take us away from our senses, you know, to take us away from living in the moment and really, you know, smelling the coffee and um, appreciating life as it goes by at that moment. And so that's why I think that, you know, cultivating an acute sensory awareness is something that can be really exciting and, and meditation really helps with that. Really? So that's something that I've been, you know, trying to learn a little bit more about as well, because I'm one of those people when you say, oh, yeah, go meditate, you know, and I can do the whole plug in your earbuds and listen to mm. some music and sit there quietly in a dark room and not move. And then about 13 seconds later, I'm done. <laughs> Right. Because I, yeah. you know, yeah. I just have so much trouble staying in that one place, and I'm sure that uh, you've found this makes a 
big impact on just living life in general, but also having more energy, having more focus and things like that. I actually just all of about 60 minutes ago uh, downloaded the app Headspace that I'm looking forward to getting into. But let's dive into this whole, you know, living life with more energy, more motivation, Mm. uh, really being able to jump out of bed in the morning um, and maybe talk a little bit about the things you've learned from Zestology and the people you've spoken with. Well, first off, let's just round off that little bit on meditation. That's fantastic you downloaded that app, and I would love to know how you get on with it. And I think that especially for type A personalities like you, you know, you run a video production company, you've got a podcast, you've got all this different stuff going on on the net, you've got so much going on, you're such a kind of achievement-driven guy that when you step back and start doing less, that's when the creative stuff, the good stuff really starts to happen. Mm -hmm. And then just from a simple energy perspective, it's like, I mean, you know, just sitting down doing nothing for a while, it's so, it's almost like having an hour and a half snooze in the middle of the day. (laughs) And actually, you know, it's, it's uh, five o'clock in the afternoon here. I've been doing some TV work today and I got back about an hour ago before this interview and I was really tired and I sat down and, thought well you know I want to be on top form for your podcast and so I kind of meditated for 20 minutes and it definitely gave me more energy afterwards I felt like I'd either had a quite a long sleep or half a cup of coffee <laughs> so I mean I think the takeaway for your listeners is that you know if you do meditate you'll know how good it is and if you don't you here's one thing you don't have to climb to the top of a mountain in wearing a tapestry waistcoat and chant om for an hour and a half at sunrise every morning. It's much easier to do that. And one of the ways to do it is by downloading an app like Headspace and letting someone else guide you through it. So um, so let me know how that goes, Zef, because I think it's great stuff, meditation. I, I found it really helps my creative process too. Yeah, and this definitely isn't just for the listeners. This is not the first time I've tried to get into it. I think that it's one of those things where you really have to push through. There's some sort of like learning obstacle or or phase where you have to get used to it. And so I think I've like pushed to that point every time and I just have to keep going a little bit further until things start to click into place with it. Um, and, and that's what I'm kind of hearing is, you know, I can't just start this up and a week later be an expert at it. Of course, this is something that takes mm. a lot of practice, a lot no, of time. No, to really but I feel it. like I feel within a few days, probably the first time you do it, you'll feel good afterwards. You know, it's it's I kind of track my energy levels every day. Mm-hmm. And on the days that I meditate in the morning or at any point during the day, I, I just feel better. I feel more energetic. I'm more focused. I live more in the moment and I have more fun as well. And I can tell that from the tracking that I do. And in fact, you know, it's, it's amazing the stats that come up about how much kind of in, in, how many increased percentage points um, I feel kind of more energy when I'm tracking it. And do you recommend, you know, people keep a journal or some sort of a, a record with them where they can, uh, I don't know, write any notes about thoughts that might have come up? Or are you writing down a gauge of, you know, where you fall on the spectrum of, the, you know, feeling tired or energetic? How are you keeping yeah. track of that? Well, I mean, I, I guess it depends on what people's priorities are. I keep a journal, but I don't journal after meditation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do track my energy levels by keeping them. I, I save it on an app, actually, an app called My Symptoms. I save that at the end of the day just because, you know, I'm interested in knowing what increases my energy and what decreases it. And I've done this whole thing on uh, tracking. Uh, I've been tracking for the last year or so. I mean, it is just so interesting. And it turns out that, you know, we talk about focus before and distractions. It turns out that uh, mobile phones, email, internet, these are the bane, not only of our working lives, but our lives full stop now because we can never get away from them. And they can consume so much time that hours need to be set aside every day to dealing with emails and surfing the net and getting distracted. And it turns out that you don't actually, you can spend a lot of your day doing stuff that isn't necessarily constructive or isn't necessarily where you're setting the agenda. So I started switching off my technology for at least a couple of hours a day. Mm. And then um, that was all part of you know, loads of things that I was doing along with, like you, for example, supplementing with vitamin D and loads of other crazy supplements that I've been trying out and road testing and then talking about my podcast, Zestology, as well. But it turned out, The biggest difference and increase in energy levels was when I switched off all technology for a certain amount of time per day. And um, when I switched off for more than eight hours a day, which admittedly is a lot and beyond most people most of the time, my energy levels went up 20% on Mm. average per day. 
So, I, and I know a lot of people will say, well, look, you know, I couldn't possibly switch off for eight hours a day because I've got a job to go to and, you know, I need technology because I might need to be in touch in case my kids need me or something right. like that. And that's cool. But, you know, I mean, even if you can just switch off for half an hour or an hour, the impact on your energy levels, I mean, for me, it's just profound. And, you know, yesterday we had a, um, what we call a bank holiday here yesterday, um, which is when, uh, you know, the day after Easter, everyone's got a, a public holiday, essentially. Mm-hmm. And it just occurred to me that, you know, we, we drove to the beach for the day. We walked along possibly the ugliest stretch of coastline that I've ever seen <laughs> in Whitstable in Kent. Sorry to anyone living in Whitstable in Kent who's listening to this. But it's only because, I don't know if it was a windy day, but the, the sea was brown, like dark brown. Normally I like my sea to be blue, but it was dark brown. Anyway, it was great to be by the sea, get some fresh air, walk, eat great food, good conversation. And it occurred to me that all the best things that we do in life and all our favorite things, pretty much none of them involve screens. You know, hanging out with friends, good communication, great food, exercise, whatever it is. When you escape the screens, normally you can get back to what you really love in life. So making that commitment to kind of focus a little bit more on the moment and enjoy life, I've found has been a theme that has come up again and again in the podcast. And um, it's been really interesting for me to apply it into my own life and see my energy levels increase by up to 20% when I do that. I think you brought up a really good golden nugget there. In fact, it might be one of the most important things that have been talked about so far is that a lot of, if not most, or all of our favorite things that we do don't involve screens. And I Mm. think that we don't really take that chance to step back and think on that for a second. All the things that we really love doing don't involve a screen. And and I just think we have to let that sink in for a second. I mean, mm. and that kind of, you know, was a little bit of a, not kick, kick to the face, but just a little bit of a surprising thing where it's like, oh, well, duh, but wait, that's really important. <laughs> yeah, I had a great idea for a, a whole business based around this for a while, escape the screens. <laughs> and and, and then uh, I even registered escapescreens.com, but then like, I couldn't think of what to do with it, so I didn't set up the business. <laughs> but, but I just feel like it's so important for us to try and apply this into our um, lives. And, and one of the things that I wrote about in my book a few years ago, and, and the, the problems of technology have got worse since then, is um, I wrote about the 0.07 commitment. And that is, um, I asked people to spend 0.07% of their day to ensure that you approach it in the right manner and to stick to your goal of kind of simplifying and doing one thing at a time. And 0.07% of a day is one minute. So really ask people to sit down for one minute and come up with a plan of when they were going to use technology at various times. So ask them to kind of, you know, before you start the important and productive part of your day, write a brief plan for when you're going to do emails, Mm. for when you're going to do personal web surfing and... That would take you a minute. And, you know, just that little commitment at the start of your day could make a whole lot of difference in terms of your focus and your productivity and spending the time doing the things that you really enjoy in life and simplifying. Yeah, I know one thing that I've been doing a lot more of recently is putting times on my calendar where I'm scheduling to sit there and go through email as opposed to, you know, going through every time my phone beeps because it just, you know, I could be sitting there all day and I feel like every time I reply to an email, I get like three more responses, especially if it's in the middle of the day and I didn't plan to sit down Mm. and do it. So I think that that's a really good point that you bring up there. And as we... Do you you find that helps when you you schedule a daily slot or an hour slot in your diary oh yeah and it's also one of the other things i do is i use uh, a program called boomerang for gmail and what it does is it allows me to schedule emails to send out a, a certain time so if i had a day where i had planned to sleep in go to the gym and not do work in the morning and work more in the afternoon and the evening if i'm checking my email at nine or 10 o'clock at night for the first time, I can actually schedule out all of my responses to send at 7am the next morning. So people think that I'm this early riser who, you know, Mm. got back to them as soon as I got up in the morning. And when in reality, Ah. I'm scheduling it out, you know, at a time 
yeah. before then. And I think it also helps to set this sort of um, almost it puts up a guard, you know, so I don't have to be known as the guy that responds within 30 seconds of you sending him the email. And I think that it really uh, sends a message that it's so important that we respect our time and we respect other people's time. Yeah, I mean, just just on that um, on that subject um i've started to use the setting where you can disable icloud mail um from the iphone so when i'm not checking mail on my phone Mm -hmm. um i can't even open it if i try and open it it's it just says oh you need to register this mail account and with a click of a button i can restore it again but it just stops that idle kind of unconscious tapping it out and opening your email when you're you know you're on the train or you're in the loo or wherever you might be it, it's it stopped me checking my email so much and the life still goes on and the world still revolves so <laughs> that's 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 been quite a good one for me actually I, I started doing it i went on holiday to um puerto rico and then near you in new york fairly recently and i thought well, i don't really want to check my email when i'm not you know, actually in the mode of checking it. But I know that sometimes I can unconsciously just start checking it. And of course, as you know, when you're running your own business, it's, it's quite easy to check quite a bit. So, um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a great idea. And, you know, the do not disturb feature on my phone has become a, a huge help as well with all of that stuff, just so nothing goes off. And, um, you know, that's kind of the, it, as long as you're not going to be the person who checks the phone every 30 seconds because it's on do not disturb, if you can have that self-control. For me, it's nice because every now and then I can look. If someone called me and I missed the call, I'll know, mm. but I don't have to answer, you know, as soon as the phone goes off. And yeah. I wanted to circle back just as we round off the episode, you had yes. mentioned you had learned and maybe tested a little bit with supplements and things like that when we were talking about vitamin D. Mm. Have you found just uh, with overall uh, mood and attitude or even just energy levels, are there any supplements that you take every day that you swear by or highly recommend for people? Well, vitamin D is a good one, but I think the effects are fairly subtle. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I like it, but it's not like I have a spray of vitamin D and five minutes later, I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, there's a couple that I like. I've been taking, I mean, I have a bulletproof coffee every morning. And I think in terms of diet and well-being, I think that works really well. Um, uh, looking at having, you know, increasing the amount of fat you have in the morning and decreasing the amount of sugary, cereally carbs. Don't be a cereal offender and maybe having a little bit more fat in the morning. And the Bulletproof Coffee certainly agrees with me. Um, but a couple that I've found are really good is one is pine pollen. Have you ever had that, Zef? I haven't. How does one even go about consuming that? <laughs> well, I mean, they yeah, it, they've worked out that basically pine pollen is is pretty much the world's richest source of natural testosterone. Hmm. Great for any man over 30, because as you're over 30, your testosterone levels start to decrease. And great for women as well in terms of balancing and regulating your hormones as well. And I've found that it gives me extra energy. I don't have it every day, but I do have it sometimes. Um, I've also been taking, have you heard of colostrum? I don't think so. Colostrum, okay, this is going to sound really weird to your, to your listeners, and that's fine. That's cool. Colostrum is taken a lot by athletes. You find it a lot in whey protein, and I have it as part of a whey protein that I take. And it is essentially um, the milk of a mammal that has just given birth. So a, a bovine cow's milk of a cow that's just given birth. And because they've just given birth, that milk has loads of extra hormones and good stuff. And it's incredible for immunity. And it's especially good if you're prone to a sensitive stomach, which I am. And I found when I've started to take this uh, colostrum, wow, it has a big impact on me. It's pretty cool. Very cool. You know, I am actually prone as well to having stomach problems. I'm mm. not the the biggest friend to food, despite the fact that I love food. Um, yeah. Real quick, could you spell out that supplement for me? Just because I want to make sure I can look that up later. Yeah, do. It's um, C-O-L-O-S-T-R-U-M, colostrum. Cool. Um, yep, it sounds pretty weird. Humans make colostrum as well after they've given birth. I'm not for one moment recommending that you drink <laughs> human colostrum. But you get various whey proteins. I use the Bulletproof whey protein that's got colostrum in it. And it, it's, it's just agreed with my stomach so much um, that that really gives me more energy. Because, of course, when you're feeling good and your digestion's good, everything else seems to work a little bit better as well. 
Very cool. Well, I know that you've learned a ton from being able to interview and meet so many people as well. You know, you've got your uh, podcast and you've got a lot of other things going on. Uh, If you had to pick maybe one thing, just the one most effective thing that any one person could put into place either right now or later this week, what would you say that is? I would say um, learn acceptance a little bit better. And I think this is really important for anyone. And I feel it's especially important because of, you know, the subject of your podcast and for you as well, you know, you're such a motivated person and you're obviously achieving so much and I'm as well. And I sometimes think that the way that we've achieved so much is by controlling the environment around us. But a lot of things in this life, we just can't control them. When we learn to accept, uh, the kind of ebbs and flows of the tide of life when we learn to accept that we can't control anything i think that not only makes us much more well-rounded individuals but it makes us a lot happier as well and probably more enjoyable to be around so yeah acceptance is um it's not always easy but when you can accept uh, everything that happens in life and uh, understand that the, there might not be a reason for it but it's happened and you've got to get on with it that can be pretty cool Awesome. I love it. And Tony, thanks so much for being here today. What is the best place for people to check out, you know, everything you have going on online? I know that um, you've got a couple of books. Where's, uh, you know, a couple links and places people can go to learn more about you and what you're doing? Well, my website is TonyWrighton.com. And if you want to check out the podcast, it's Zestology. And you can just type that into Google and and you'll find it. And I'd love you to listen to my show. Perfect. Well, thanks for being here. And uh, we certainly appreciate you taking some time out of your day. Yeah, thanks, Zeph. It's been really fun. And um, if I ever come to Baltimore, you'll have to hook me up with some of your pastries. Sounds good. (laughs) Cheers. Take care. Hey, everyone. It's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live a life rescripted. scripted